Well, ladies and gentlemen, in this video, I'm going to be talking about the airplanes that were hijacked on September 11th. Would there potentially be any type of opportunity for the passengers who did outnumber the hijackers, the, the pilot and then the muscle hijackers, who, by the way, were not really muscle. They just were called that because they were brought in to help subdue everyone. They were younger, easier to manipulate, things like that. A lot of the muscle hijackers weren't told about the actual specifications of the plan until right before. Now, I'm not sure exactly when. I'm imagine if it was the morning. I don't think they would wait that long. But this video I just wanted to talk about, I saw a Mark Wahlberg quote and it was really cringy. It was like, oh, if I was on that plane with my kids, you know, I would survive. I would kill all the hijackers and things like that. Now, Wahlberg himself was scheduled to be on Flight 11, which would have been like the worst flight to be on. He said that he overslept and he missed the flight, the Flight 11. So that's what kind of prompted him saying that. Number one, I, I do want to say, if any one of us were on these planes, we're not stopping anything. Okay, back in 2001, the protocols were totally different. The, your first thought is we're going to be landing somewhere. That, you know, they're not going to fly the plane into the ground or into a building because they would. you would think that the hijackers would value their, their life. Uh, obviously, they didn't, but it, no one would really stop it, let's be honest. This is more of a kind of hypothetical, could they actually do something? And I think when it comes to a situation like this, Another thing people talk about is the cockpit door. It's important to note back in 2001 and before that, the rules were extremely lax when it came to leaving the cockpit door open or even just the cockpit door being extremely flimsy. They had to reinforce it and, and, and like remake the cockpit doors to uh, add some things after September 11th to make sure that if you rammed you know a cart into it, if you tried kicking it down with your foot, you wouldn't be able to. So it was relatively easy for them to get into the cockpit. But just in general, I think when, when you're talking about a situation with these hijackers, you would really have to act uh, immediately right away. And, and you would need, you know, able-bodied men. You, you would ha certainly have enough of them to easily, even with, you know, the hijackers having the, the weapons, the box cutters, you might get cut up a little bit, but you got four or five men, you know, per one hijacker. And again, like some of these, they, they weren't even in shape. They were, you know, five, five, 130 pounds. They, they would have been very easy. Obviously, the other problem is the fake bomb that they, you know, made to try and threaten people and, and use that as like, you know, if you come any closer, if you come into the first class cabin, we're, we're going to set off a bomb and, and kind of use that as a threat. That would be another issue. But I think if you acted like right away, then that would be your best chance. The problem is if you do what they did on Flight 93, which obviously at that point they had known it, it was they were not going to be flown back to an airport or even to a field. It was it, they were going to go down one way or another unless they somehow were able to get into the cockpit when they tried to make their run up and you see this in both the movies United 93 and Flight 93 by the way one of the movies i think it's United 93 is is definitely better it's not even close i believe it's United 93 the one's really low budget you can tell the the one that's higher in, in budget is really good i like that one a lot but what you can see when they start getting up there and obviously they're going to easily trample over the two or three muscle hijackers that were trying to stop them, the main hijacker pilot starts really twisting and turning the plane, making it extremely hard to even have your balance. And, and they did get into the cockpit in that movie. And I think what you would want to do pretty much immediately is you have, you have to kill the uh, pilot hijacker so he doesn't have control over the plane anymore. You, I would just slit his throat. That'd be the easiest way to do it. And you can get his grip off of steering the plane into the ground. But at that point, the plane was already at such a low descending angle and, and, and it was so close to the ground. I'm sure all the warning signs were going off terrain, you know, when this, when the plane does that. But that would the, the only way I could see them potentially stopping this because of the dynamics. Once you get into a situation where all of the passengers are removed from first class and, and sent back to whether it's business class, it depends what plane you're on, but 
They used to have first class, business class, and then just, you know, the normal seats. They were all sent way to the back. The, there's no way where you can like break through everything because the, the, the hijackers will just relay to the main hijacker pilot to turn the plane viciously, do whatever you can to make sure that they don't get in here. And then worst case scenario, just nosedive the plane into the ground. So it would have to be probably some type of hijacker mistake to where they were not able to start threatening people or you know, the problem is it's first class. So it's going to be mainly older people. That's where they start. And the more able body men would be business class and back. But you would have to do subdue them right at the start before they even touched the cockpit door and tie them up or whatever at that point if that's what happened they probably would not kill them because i would imagine they just thought you know they were taking trying to take the plane for some type of negotiation with them getting money although that in and of itself makes no sense like how are you going to land an airplane pretty anywhere and, and, and like request money and you're never going to see any of that money it's just ridiculous but unless you, I, I don't know but i would say the only way you could do it is by acting immediately and even then it's just the hypothetical with like Mark Wahlberg oh I would go up there well it doesn't really matter if you would go up there they have control of the plane and there's like another uh, hijacker that can relay immediately to the pilot hijacker that uh, they're coming up here or someone's coming up here and the plane would be th flown a thousand different directions they would turn it upside down they would do whatever uh, by the way What's the one movie with Denzel Washington? I think it's just called Flight. That's a good movie. And that was a great scene when he inverted the plane and then brought it back over. That's another good movie if you like uh, airplane crashes or, or you know turbulence on flights. What's the one Liam Neeson movie where they're on the plane and, and he has to figure out, you know, who I, I don't even remember what happened, but I actually saw that in theaters. That was probably like 2014, 2013, something like that. But there's a movie, there's another movie if you want to watch that. But I'm just saying in general, when it comes to a situation like this, you're pretty much screwed when you get, you know, thrown to the back or just, you know, escorted to the back where all of the passengers are in the back. And then you've got two or three of the muscle hijackers kind of in the business class. And then you have one of the hijackers relaying to the main hijacker who, you know, would be the pilot of the plane at that point. And it becomes a big issue. And obviously when it comes to the first two planes that were flown into the Twin Towers, there's nothing they could have done literally nothing considering they just didn't know how to handle that situation they didn't know that's what was going to be happening and when it comes to you know the third plane very similar situation the fourth plane obviously they realized it and they were able to get the plane down before it reached I believe it was the U.S. Capitol they were aiming for but that would just be my opinion on trying to stop something like that obviously the number one thing that you should have and we have it now is the reinforced cockpit doors that you know there's protocols to where they're not unlocked at any point you go back to flights in like the 1990s where they show the first class the cockpit doors will be wide open everything was just so lax including the airport security as well but that would be the number one thing if you make an extremely strong cockpit door or you could also say if the co-pilot looks through the peephole and sees that, you know, th there is potential terrorists trying to get in, maybe they could throw something in front of the door, but even that, you know, you're trying to stop four or five guys from getting in. Would you even have anything in the cockpit to be able to block the door and try and reinforce it? Imagine if they actually did that. That would be pretty crazy, but, but, but we're just really making up things at this point. I'm just trying to think of different theories in terms of actually trying to survive a situation like this. Obviously, the number one way to survive this would be by having a very strong cockpit door and they would not be able to enter. And you also have the, the protocols in place where it's basically always locked from when they take off. But that's just my opinion. You know, I just saw that, that Mark Wahlberg quote. I mean, it's just such, you know, it's just such a bro quote. Like, oh, if I was on that plane... It's like, dude, you got to have context to the situation. You're not going to do anything in 2001. They just, I don't know. Either way, that's going to do it for this video. Make sure you follow me on X. Link to that's always in the description.